Hello everyone, welcome to the year 2022, and as promised, I am here to deliver an updated list on the top 10 shmups on the Nintendo Switch. It has been a few years since my previous list, and as solid as that was at the time, there have been an insane amount of top quality releases on the Nintendo Switch since then, and so the placings have really shifted, have really changed, and so I thought it was time for a nice update. And what's cool about this video is you're going to get two different top 10s to choose from. So the first is going to be a top 10 from the subscribers of this channel where I put out a poll in the community post and I got about 101 responses. And so this is the top 10 list according to the subscribers of the channel. And then the second top 10 list I'll show you is my own personal top 10, my editorial decision. What's kind of cool is that between these two lists, there's actually a lot more crossover and similarity than I predicted. Maybe that shows that I'm successfully indoctrinating my channel into my way of thinking. Or maybe this is just more of a straightforward matter than I first suspected. And so it's going to be pretty cool to see the differences between the two lists and also give you some variety of maybe if you prefer one over the other, we can compare the two. And maybe what we'll do is I'll say them side by side. So that way things aren't too confusing. So let's begin with number 10 on both the lists where we both chose Eskatos slash Judgment Silver Sword. So both the viewers and myself felt that this deserved to be on the list. And what's funny is that I actually did not realize this release was available until I was doing research for this video. But I am very well familiar with Eskatos and Judgment Silver Sword, both top quality shmups. Of the two, I actually liked Silver Sword a little bit more than Eskatos, but both are definitely worth your time. And it is really cool to see them make their way on the Nintendo Switch. And probably not something that came across a lot of people's radar. Like I said, I didn't even notice this release and I am a person who watches shmups coming out for consoles a lot. So definitely do not miss out on this. And it's cool that they're double packed together. Number nine. So number nine on the viewer list was Death Smiles Collection, a very recent release. I actually reviewed it last month. And so Death Smiles Collection features both Death Smiles 1 and 2. And in my review, I can get into all the differences and why I kind of prefer Death Smiles 1 over Death Smiles 2. And while I think this is a solid release, I was a little bit disappointed with the quality as far as the porting emulation. It isn't bad or anything. It isn't a disaster, but I think they might have been able to trim down that input lag just a little bit more, get it a little bit closer to the Steam version with the input lag. And also I felt the DLC was a little underwhelming and kind of overpriced, but still a very solid release, especially on the Switch, which is a handheld where horizontal shmups really lend themselves to the screen and to playing on the Switch much better than vertical shmups. And I have a whole video about why I think this is, even though stuff like the flip grip exists. But anyway, number nine, Death Smiles, very well deserved. And number nine on my list, of course, is the tried and true classic. I think some people would assume this is just number one on every list ever, at least a few years ago, that's the way it was, which is Ikaruga. And the funny thing is there's been so many releases of shmups on Nintendo Switch. I think some people have sort of forgotten that Ikaruga is indeed on the Nintendo Switch. And while I don't think it is the greatest shmup of all time or anything like that, I do think it is an excellent shmup and it does make its way to many platforms and the port on the Switch is pretty dang solid. Not perfect, but pretty solid. So I thought it might be worthwhile to bring Ikaruga back on my number nine slot. So number eight on the viewers list, we have Don Maku Unlimited 3. And from what I remember, Don Maku Unlimited 3 was actually one of the very first bullet hell shmups that was released on the Nintendo Switch. I remember when I got my Switch, I got Don Maku Unlimited 3 pretty shortly afterward. And my Switch was basically a Don Maku Unlimited 3 machine for about a year because uh, it didn't quite get too many bullet hells in the beginning. And this is a great entry point into the genre. If you're trying to pick up bullet hell, if you're trying to get your teeth into stuff like cave games and Toho and all that sort of stuff, but you're really getting whopped around. I think Don Mako Unlimited 3 is a great way to get into this style of gameplay because it does a lot of things right with introducing players to different modes, having a nice fluid difficulty selection where it's not like ridiculously easy, but also not just this massive wall in difficulty. So I think Don Mako Unlimited 3, a very early passion on this channel, a ton of videos covering it. And so number eight, I think that makes sense. And then on my number eight, I put the Aleste, Aleste collection. I don't ever remember how to pronounce that. The big standout of this collection is, of course, the GG Aleste 3, the exclusive shmup made by M2 and exclusively in this collection. 
I think it really is the selling point of it. I mean, the earlier games are cool and everything, but having this brand new original shmup by M2, which is a lot of fun, in my opinion, probably just better than the other releases in the series, definitely makes it worth your time. Just be sure to play it with slowdown turned off because slowdown turned on, it's on like a Game Gear, it's emulating a Game Gear hardware. I think it's a little bit too easy on that side of things, so make sure to turn slowdown off. I personally prefer to play it more on the PS4 than on the Switch, but it is still really cool to have on the Switch, especially since it is bringing off a Game Gear, which is a handheld console, so that makes sense. And now we have number seven on the viewer list, Escaluda 2. Previously only available on either PCB or the Xbox 360, no Steam version of Galuda 2, but now it's made its way to the Nintendo Switch by Livewire, a company that's bringing a lot of cave games to the Nintendo Switch. But what is interesting about this port, outside of just being a great game and everything, is like I said, this was previously just Xbox 360 only, where the other Livewire releases, DFK and Mushim Sama, had Steam ports. And so it is really interesting to see, will Livewire continue this trend? Will they bring other Xbox 360 only shmups to the Nintendo Switch? Something like Akai Katana, Pink Sweets, and of course, Futari. The big question mark is Futari. And so it would be cool to see those come to the Switch as well. And Escalita 2, I'm not as much of a fan of it, I think, as other cave fans, where I don't really rate it that high in the series compared to Esperade and Escalita 1. But I do know that the game is actually really well made and it sort of reminds me of a precursor to what you'll see in Futari later on. And I know it is sort of like a cult classic among a lot of cave fans. So I can see why it made its way to number seven. My number seven selection is Don Maku Unlimited 3. I've already talked about that in the number eight slot, so I won't repeat myself. But I did put a ton of time into this game and so felt like it had to retain some sort of position on my top Switch shmups list. Just for all the hours I put into it early on and also something I constantly recommend to people looking to get into the genre. Number six on the viewer list, Rolling Gunner. Now this surprised me a little bit, I will admit, because I sort of assumed Rolling Gunner would be much higher up on the viewer list because especially a few years ago, Rolling Gunner made a massive splash on the Switch where it's horizontal, it's a bullet hell, it has some cave connections, it's insanely hard, and it was also easier to get on the Switch than it was to get on PC for a while because initially if you wanted to get on PC you actually had to order it from this kind of bootleg site, probably the developer site directly, sorry about that, but it was a little bit bootleg and you're sort of wondering, okay, is it actually going to show up in the mail or not and everything, and it did, but I think it didn't make its way to Steam. I don't know if it's on Steam or anything like that, but it was on the eShop earlier on, so it actually was kind of easier to get on the Switch initially. So it always had sort of um, an association with the Switch that was very strong. And I think the DLC also came out on the Switch first, I believe. So I was surprised to see that it was this low on the list, considering how much connection it has with the Switch shmup fan base. But the numbers don't lie. Number six, Rolling Gunner. My number six choice, which may surprise some people, is Dodonpachi Resurrection or DFK. That's the Japanese title. Now, this one is a bit tricky because Dodonpachi Resurrection could be argued to be much higher on the list as as far as quality of game, right? It's an amazing cave shmup. It has an insane amount of modes. It has a insane amount of content. It is a shmup that is insanely popular. In fact, when I did a poll a while back, it was the most popularly played shmup at the time. I think this was about a year ago. And so there are a lot of factors that could push DFK higher on the list. But personally, the reason why it is a bit low on my list is because that it also already has ports on the Xbox 360 and on Steam. And those ports are pretty damn solid. And the, and the Switch port is good as well, but I don't really feel myself pulled towards playing it on the Switch as compared to playing it on the 360 or on Steam. So that is why it isn't as high on the list, though I will not deny that it is an excellent shmup. And continuing this trend, number five on the viewer list is DFK, Donanpachi Resurrection. So they placed it a slot above my own for reasons that are very understandable. My number five selection was Darius Cosmic Collection. Now I'll give a little bit of a spoiler. Darius Cosmic Collection does not show up on the viewer voter list, which surprised me because this is such a fan favorite. Again, this is something that you see people constantly talking about. Switch shmup players seem to be huge fans of this collection. It's done by M2, not Shot Triggers, just regular M2. 
but it's done very well. There's a ton of games in here, and of course it has the best Darius game, Darius Gaiden, at least in my opinion. So I was a little bit surprised to see it didn't make its way onto the viewer selected list. And I think it was one of my top selections in the previous list, but I do think that it definitely deserves to maintain some presence on my own personal top 10 list. So here it is, holding it down in number five, Number four on the viewer list, to no surprise, is the Aleste Collection, or Aleste, however you say it. I've already talked about that a little bit earlier. You can see it's much higher on the viewer list than it is on my own. And I think the reason for that is because the viewers also play the other games in the collection, like Aleste 2 and everything, where I just play the new game and kind of ignore the other ones. And it was a little bit of a divisive release where some people felt like it might have been a bit overpriced when it came out because just compared to, at the time, the other M2 Shot Triggers releases, stuff like Esperade, stuff like Ketsui, Destiny, Dangun, Fever, and it felt a little bit underwhelming for some people, but I think the inclusion of that exclusive shmup really made up for that. So number four goes to Aleste with the viewers. My number four selection is Esperade Psy, which may be a surprising choice for some people because for those who follow some of my other videos like my cave tier list, Esperade is one of my favorite cave shmups and so it would kind of make sense for it to be even higher on my own list. But the reason why I put it on number 4 rather than higher is sort of the same reason why I put DFK a little bit lower is because whenever I want to play Esperade Psy, I almost always play it on the PS4 because the PS4 has one less frame of lag than the Nintendo Switch. That being said though, I do still get a good amount of time on the Switch version in handheld mode. I do wish you could control it a little bit better on handheld. I wish you could do something to get the Dan Switch to play vertically with proper controls and I have a whole video about that, so I won't get into all that here. But I do still think that it is an excellent shmup and definitely sort of like an essential purchase that you get with your Switch. You get your Switch. You gotta get Esperade Psy along with it. And it is, I think, the only Cave M2 Shot Triggers release on Nintendo Switch. So you have other Cave games like DFK, Mushi Misama, Espluda 2, but those are all by Livewire. I think this is the only Cave M2 Shot Triggers team release, and it is a little bit disappointing they didn't bring Ketsui Destiny to the Switch. I feel like that would make sense as well, but for whatever reason, they didn't. But you do get Esperade Psy, and funnily enough, keeping this theme going, the number three pick on the viewer list is Esperade Psy, which definitely makes sense to me because if you're mostly playing on the Nintendo Switch, it still feels like a very essential shmup to get and to play, and so it does definitely make sense that it is number three on the viewer list. My number three pick, which I assumed would have been much higher on the viewer list, is Rolling Gunner. So the reason why I picked Rolling Gunner is because even though I have the PC port, it's one of the few shmups that I actually spend more time on the Switch than I do on the PC or any other version of the game. And the reason for that is that it's just built so well for handheld play on the Nintendo Switch. It's horizontal, it's 16x9, if you get the Split Pad Pro on the right and you get the Hori Joy-Con on the left, you can get beautiful solid controls. If only there was a version of the Switch where you could just get a bigger screen, you know, like a bigger Switch overall, because it is still a little bit difficult to dodge some of those bullet patterns with it so tiny at times, but still, I do play a lot on the Nintendo Switch of Rolling Gunner. It's a staple, you can't go wrong with it, so I always recommend it to Switch players for that reason. So that's my number three pick. And so now the viewer number two pick surprised me a little bit because I didn't know how the viewers would rate this, right? I didn't know if the viewers would rate it higher or lower than the other Livewire selections, but the viewers came through Mushimi-sama at number two on the Nintendo Switch. And what's really cool about this port is that unlike S Gluta 2, it actually has the same amount of input lag as the Xbox 360 version, at least according to my testing in my review. So they both have three frames of input lag. So Livewire really went ham on making this perform as well as possible on the Nintendo Switch which is very impressive. It is one of the most responsive shmups on the Nintendo Switch, and it's freaking Mushihimi-sama. How can you go wrong there? One of my favorite Cave releases of all time. I think an extremely popular release by Cave. It has all these different modes. Of course, it has the arcade selection where you can have original, Maniac, or Ultra. Then it has all the arranges. You can play Mushihimi-sama range, which itself is one of the best Cave ranges of all time. 
and then there's Matsuri. There's just so much to choose from from this release. You could spend hours and hours and hours like I do just playing Mushimi-sama on the Switch. So it makes sense for it coming out at number two. And it is definitely, again, a shmup that I often recommend to people getting into the genre, especially if you're a Toho player and you want to get into Cave. I think Mushimi-sama is a great bridge game for that, as well as Futari. And then my number two pick, this may surprise people, is Crimson Clover World Explosion. And I think this may surprise people because I think a lot of people would have assumed that CCWE would be my number one choice. The reason why it is number two is actually number one until very recently. The reason why it ended up in my number two slot is because I feel like the Steam PC version of it is just better than the Switch version. It just performs better, less input lag. You can get that nice, giant, really big uh, high resolution graphics on the PC that the, you know, the Switch is a little bit limited where it does just 1080p. You can get higher resolution graphics. It just looks amazing on PC, it runs like a dream. And so up until the PC port, I would have made this my number one Switch Mup because it was so compelling. But I think the PC port sort of blows the Switch version out of the water. So that's why I kind of knocked the Switch version down a slot. The number one choice though, by a landslide, by no contest decision, there was no ambiguity, there was no maybe, hmm, here or there, splitting hairs. By a landslide, the viewer number one choice was Crimson Clover World Explosion. This was no contest, which shocked me. I actually wasn't sure what the viewers would choose as their number one. I didn't assume Crimson Clover World Explosion would be number one. I kind of assumed it would be high up on the list. But like I said, there was no contest. This was clearly the number one pick by the majority of people and I think I understand why I mean it is a fantastic shmup it is basically the closest you're gonna get to a sequel to cave right I think it's the closest you're ever gonna get until maybe someday in the future cave come to their senses and make an arcade game again so many awesome elements the visuals the style all the different modes and world explosion adds in this amazing arrange mode i cannot say enough good about it on the channel i have a ton of videos about it so you don't need to hear me ramble on anymore but i think this is a very strong pick for the number one my number one though which may surprise people is actually mushihimi sama by livewire and why i decided to go with mushihimi sama by livewire it was a close call but it's because i actually find myself firing this up a lot on my nintendo switch I'm not even sure why. I mean, I love Mushim Sam. It's one of my favorite shmups. I don't know why I tend to play it much more than the Crimson Clover World Explosion port. I think it's because the input lag on the Switch version of this game is just better than the Crimson Clover World Explosion. And then uh, it also just performs beautifully. I love Mushim Sama. All the different modes, all the different arranges, everything about it. It's just the full package. For me, it was a much closer split decision between Crimson Clover and Mushi, but in the end, I felt like Mushi was my number one recommended shmup on Nintendo Switch. Again, it's just a game that you should just buy when you get your Switch. They just should come along with it. Pack in title. So I hope you all enjoyed my updated top 10 shmups on the Nintendo Switch. Hopefully this maybe brought some attention to games that you may not have heard of before. There were a lot of honorable mentions that didn't make it into the list. Maybe I'll spit a few out here at the end. For example, I know that Saivar Delta, amazing port that doesn't get a lot of attention, was not high on the list, but I saw it mentioned here and there pretty passionately, so I thought, hey, I'll give that a shout out. Another one is the cotton stuff. So again, there was no compelling, like, big wave of votes for the cotton stuff, but I did see that cotton reboot did get quite a few votes, and a lot of people were really passionate about that, and I recommend it quite a bit because people ask, oh, if you're getting a cotton game on the Switch, what should you, what should you get? And my favorite ha so far has been cotton reboot so that's another great selection that i will give to the honorable mention section thanks so much for tuning in please remember to like subscribe tell all your friends and check out the reddit as well there's going to be a lot of activity on there especially shmup slam 5 comes up so follow that if you're so inclined adios everyone Thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Iodice, Aaron Solis, Ben, Blur STG, Borgie 22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Bubblegum Crisis 1394, Chris Yusufovich, 
Chronic Burnout 3, Corey Mark, Daniel Savage, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Star Slayer, DJ420, Praise It, Doves, Entropy, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Hausu, Ilya, Kiwi, JLab, JB, RPG, Jim Knockham, Joe Angelo, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kikoman589, Larage, Malaise, Mark Toms, Maz, Megadeth859, Minong, Mechelin, Mitch LY, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Okla Googles, Philt Mason, Portal 63, Rattle Cat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Scanline City, Seven Overdose, Shane Sinsensky, SLW, Sniper's Paradise, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, The Dirty Screech, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, Twilight EX, Plasmo, and Yutsukaya. Thanks for watching.